Welcome back aboard Arabella. This week, Steve gets the navigation electronics up in the masts, wired into the boat, and up and running. Unfortunately for him, most of the work is aloft, and it's been a windy place to be lately. All right, I'm gonna try to put this in today. It is windy, but it is dry. And the mizzen mast, I don't have to go all the way to the tippy tippy top. It's just part way up the mast. So I think even though it's so windy, I'll be able to install this stuff. It's gonna be uncomfortable. It's not gonna be fun, but we've got just more wind. And when we don't have wind, we have rain and we've got to go back to Granby very soon and help mom out, so there's, uh, there's no time like the present. Thankfully, I'm used to working at heights in a bit of wind, so nothing too new. I'm gonna go up first with the cables and see if I can get these routed down the conduit on the mast, and if I can get that done successfully, then I'll bring up the bases and see if I can get those put in. Getting that Garmin dome up there is going to be, I think, the crux of today, just because that has the most windage. These brackets, the wind's not going to tug on too bad. These are pretty small and light. I think that radar dome is going to be the tricky bit. It up here, but satellite compass is in, satellite weather's in. We want to wait on the radar until it's less windy. But the base is there, progress. Holy smokes! With all of the mounts in place and the cables run down the mast, the next step for Steve was to get the cables through the housetop and over to the navigation table. While he was at it, he also put in two USB charging ports for use in the cockpit, which in the summer is one of Robin's favorite office locations. But today, while Steve was drilling away, she and Akiva took work to the beach. And thanks to our friends at Aeropress, she had the midday coffee fix covered as well. So I love Aeropress, I've mentioned it before, but I've been using Aeropress for years just um, with all the camping and climbing and hiking and backpacking. Uh, but there are some people who take Aeropress very seriously. Like we're talking Aeropress tattoos on their body. There's Aeropress competitions. Um, you know, people have posted pictures of them using their Aeropress all over the world, like from the tallest peaks of the Himalayas all the way down to the canals of Venice. I think one of my favorite things about Aeropress is that it combines the flavor profiles of pour over or espresso or French press uh, and it just makes for one really amazing unique cup of coffee that you can have anywhere no matter where you are. Considering that there's more than 55,000 five-star reviews in more than 60 countries, uh, it's shockingly affordable. Less than 50 bucks, and we've got an incredible offer for our audience. Visit aeropress.com slash acorn. That's A-E-R-O-P-R-E-S-S dot com slash acorn, and use the promo code ACORN to save 20% on your order. Aeropress ships to the USA and over 60 countries around the world. And we thank Aeropress for sponsoring our show. Well, it's delicious. So this cable gland comes with these four different little brass tubes, which are actually the cutters. So I need the two smallest sizes. 
and I'm going to need five total. Two of the bigger ones, one for the Starlink and one for the power for the radar, and then three smaller ones which will be for the communication slash power cables for the satellite compass, the satellite weather, and the uh, radar. So I'm going to do the big one on the top, two of those, and then three these little guys, and this basically just cores this rubber. All right, I need to push harder. That's not gonna work. So I can't get the ends of the cables through because they have fittings on them. So it's going to seem crazy, but the solution to that is to cut in from the side. And we'll go fit that around some cables. And then when this gland gets all squished and tightened down, the rubber will essentially self-seal and the water won't be able to get through. It's pretty pretty nifty little rig. All right, grab some screws. Screw that down to the house side. Make sure I get these cables shoved in here real well. And screw the lid over. And then do some neatening up. Radar data is plugged in. Compass is plugged in. So I've got to do the power for the weather. I've got to do the power for the radar. <laughs> Robin's uh, first time flying the drone. Hopefully she doesn't crash it. I don't think she will. So check it out. We have a radar dome. We have a satellite compass. And hiding on the other side, we have the satellite weather. And we are not getting plasticated by 
20 and 30 and 40 mile an hour winds today. But it has been kind of cloudy and drizzly for most of the day. So we got our cables screwed into the radar dome there. We've got our grease in there. Keep all the moisture out. This is our neighbor Mitch. Hey Mitch, how you doing? Good buddy. How you going, monkey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got all the wires wrapped in split wrap. Zip tied up. Tucked in nice and neat. <sighs> this has been a cold, windy, wet uncomfortable, generally unenjoyable projects, but <laughs> we should have radar now. We're supposed to get a bunch of rain and I want to seal this up. So before it was just the VHF wire that went in and really not much water came into the boat at all. But now with this one running down, oh boy, last time it rained, we had a lot coming in. So I have Some duck seal. Certainly not going to use this whole one pound plug. All right. We'll see how that does. This stuff was cheap enough and easy enough. So if it doesn't work out, I'll peel it out and try something else. If you have a favorite compound that you use for sealing up a hole in a wooden mass like this, Please uh, share in the comments. Love to know what other people use. Maybe this is uh, the typical thing. Maybe it's not. done with this. This turned into a bigger project than I was anticipating, but isn't that usually the case? Boats. Gotta love it. Keeps me on my toes and actually having to do what I just did probably isn't a bad thing because Satchel built this system and Aiden added on to it with the lights and it's been kind of nice to, to move things around and kind of figure out what's what and who's on first, so to speak. And now I feel like I have a lot better understanding of what's going on back here and how things are organized than I did. And I guess it's better to do that sitting here with no rush and Harwich port than when something goes hinky underway, I gotta troubleshoot it. So this was a... turned out being a great exercise. So what I've added is the cabling here is coming from the mizzen mast. And that's what's all bundled up here is all the extra NMEA 200 cables, which is what helps that Garmin gear all talk to each other and the big move <laughs> was moving this system here for the NMEA so they all tie into this backbone here so this one runs forward to the main mast that's where the G wind ties in this one is for the compass it's currently unhooked because it's giving me an error reading that I got to figure out and it's really annoying and I don't need the compass at the moment, so we just have that unplugged. I gotta spend a little more time here and clean up some of Aiden's light wiring and shrink wrap that, clean that up a little bit, split wrap that rather. So this cable's been there a long time, and this one heads up to the nav station on deck with the chart plotter, the GMI-20, and the VHF radio up there. 
These ones are just added, so we got to wire those up still, but this gives us plugs on deck that we can charge, you know, phones and that kind of thing into. And when Robin works in the cockpit, should be able to plug right in. And then here we have our hole for our cables. This is all going to get covered, just like this is up here with a locust chase. So when that's done, you won't ever see any of that. And one of the really nice things about the strip built housetop is if I want to change this someday and I want to plug these holes, it's super, super easy to make that just totally disappear with the uh, fiberglass on the outside and the paint on the inside. So I feel pretty good about just kind of hacking holes under the house side because fixing it is, is easy peasy. So that cabling runs under, We've got our air horn easily accessible under the companionway stairs. The cables keep running around. These ones are for the solar panels. And our info from the mast keeps coming around right into here. The weather is there, but it won't work until we get a serious satellite subscription, and we're not going to do that until we're not where we can get weather on a phone. Everything's bundled up. Most of the wiring here is really nice and neat. Satchel did a pretty bang up job. There is a few things that got added, some of the lights and stuff. These need to get cleaned up. Some of them can be shortened, split wrapped. And one of these days I'll, I'll tend to that. But for the most part, I found this pretty easy to dive into and, and figure out. It was a very, very good learning exercise. Arabella's systems actually are, are not crazy, and this panel could support a much larger system. Everything's broken down really small, and we have empty breakers, so, so these two are empty, these four here are empty. So if we turn on nav 1 and 2, we should get the chart plotters, VHF radio. I don't know why we're waiting for that, why don't we throw on... AIS. Did you see the lights come on back here? So those are for the AIS. So that's doing something. And we'll throw the radar on. We're going to leave the weather off. Oh, VHF works. Coast Guard's looking for someone. So when I fire up the chart plotter, this is what I'm used to seeing. Uh, let's see if we can get some of these other features to show up. I have so much to learn with this. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. So we go to home. And let's see. One helm. Wind. Ha ha, here we go. So there is more data here than at this point. I totally understand, but definitely will learn here. So if we come up here to the Garmin GMI-20, I believe. We can pull up our wind. We can see this in a few different ways. This is where we've been normally, because this is all the data it's had. So if we are somewhere we are not worried about the depth, you know, this would be a a good screen to have up if we're more focused on what the wind is doing. And now we've got radar. And if you see these little lights in the corner here, those are from the AIS. So the AIS is up and running, but it's winter, and it's gross out, so nobody's out and about and moving. I was playing with this a little earlier, and I got an AIS warning that we were on a collision course, and there was a boat coming up the channel. So the AIS is working, 
and the VHF is also working. I had to take apart the wires going from the VHF and hook it into the AIS and it seems to be working just fine. The Coast Guard is currently looking for some gentlemen and that's been going off a little bit so I know that that is operational. Since everything's on its own breaker it's really easy to turn things on and off. So we've gotten a bunch of emails and folks have even stopped by to lecture me about having all of this nav gear on the boat and how it's not really needed and we're, we're in home waters on a beautiful day. What's the point of wasting electricity? And in a lot of ways they're right. I mean, we don't have home waters. Like we move around too much. There's no place that we're going to stay long enough that you could classify it as home waters. But you know, when we're somewhere out in the middle of the bay and it's a beautiful sunny day and not many folks are around and the weather's calm, we definitely don't need radar and AIS and everything all fired up. So we can turn them off and we can cherry pick what of that nav gear we want to use and when we want to use it. Maybe we have AIS on, but radar off, maybe the other way around. And when things are really gross and we're in an area with a lot of fishing boats and there's a lot of traffic and all of that, we can turn on all this gear. And I'm not suggesting that we video game sail and you know just look at the screen, but when you're looking out and you're not really sure what's going on, and you can look at the radar and go, I think I hear something over there. And you look on the radar and you're like, yeah, there is something over there. And then you look at the AIS and it says that's fishing vessel Godzilla and it's heading in this direction. That's awesome information. Uh, and it's not always needed, but um, it's gonna be great to have that option. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to test this stuff out and finish getting things finalized. We got to register for the AIS and we still have to register for the VHS and get our, what is it, the MMSI number. Uh, we don't have that yet. So we had to get those done ASAP. Uh, but otherwise, all the hard stuff's in. Everything's wired, everything seems functional, and I can't wait to put it to the test. Spring is here, maybe. It's just been gross, rainy, it's pouring all day today. Um, but eventually it will come and Eventually we'll get to use all this cool new gear and, and see uh, see how much nicer it makes being in the water. And then I got this little guy mounted. So this measures the heel of the boat. So as the boat tips, 10, 20, 30, 40. And funny story about this gauge, uh, my friend Brian, who met us in the Oregon mountains, lives on the west coast. And he sent me a picture. Him and his wife were out on the town one day and they stopped into a place that sold all sorts of nautical things. And he sent me a couple of random pictures and asked if there was anything in there that I could use. And the first picture was of that. <clears throat> so he uh, purchased it and sent it out for me. Ooh, it's gross up there. So thank you, Brian. I, uh, I've had it for a little while. I finally got around to uh, getting it mounted, and it'll be cool this summer when we get a good blow to, to actually be able to put a number to how far we're healing and if it's equal on both tacks. And it'll be a cool little piece of data to add to the kit. And I cannot believe that of everything in that place, the first picture Brian sent me was of like the only thing that I needed there. <laughs> Wild. So thank you, Brian. I really, really appreciate it. Can't wait to sail with you.